Hello there, this is Zach Murphy here, and I have a new teaching for you in my series on the Gospel of John. It's been a little over a week since I posted the last video, so I'm kind of catching up with posting the videos on these. Um, in this teaching, I'm actually going to finish up the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Um, so if you haven't looked at the other videos beforehand, please be sure to check those out. I will um, link the playlist here. Um, one other thing that I want to point out is at the end of these teachings, I will do prayer requests if I receive any, so you can either comment them or in the description of this video, there will be a link to submit a prayer request. Um, so that is definitely something to be sure you do if you have a prayer request. Um, and also share this with other people so that they can submit prayer requests. Um, I will definitely pray over them. And if you do submit me a prayer request, be sure to send me an update if something changes with that prayer request. Um, but other than that, um, I do want to pray before I get into what God has prepared me to teach for this teaching. So I'm going to get into it and we'll dive in. So let's pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Lord, and for the ability for me to speak your word over social media, Lord. Um, use me as your vessel, Lord, to deliver the message you want me to teach here, Lord, and give the people listening and watching this, give them ears to understand and absorb this information, Lord, and also give them fresh revelation, too, from this teaching, and give them more of a hunger to know your word and get in your word more. And to you the glory. Amen. So I first want to start off with verse 35 in John chapter 1. So if you want to follow up your Bible, please turn there. Um, starting with verse 35, it tells us, And the next day John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. So Jesus is the Lamb of God, and he is worthy of every praise. Uh, if you look with me in Revelation chapter 5, and it is verses 5 through 14, and some of you should know that John, the one that wrote the Gospel of John, also wrote Revelation also. Um, definitely another good book of the Bible. They're all good. Um, so starting with verse 11 in Revelation chapter 5, it says, Then I looked, and this is John talking, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and this is a vision he had in heaven, um, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Verse 13, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen, and the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. This is talking about Jesus, so he is worthy of every praise. Um, just an example we see of that in Revelation here. You know when we get to heaven, we're going to be worshipping Jesus all the time. So... I encourage you to implement some personal worship time in your own life, whether that's 10 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, whatever you can fit in. Try to fit in something on a routine basis aside from just your um, Sunday praise that you do at church. Um, I want to go on to verses 37 through 42. Um, in, back in John chapter 1, which says, the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them, he said to them, What do you seek? 
And when Jesus asked them what do they seek, he's asking them what are you seeking for? What are you seeking Jesus for? And it's something we have to think about also ourselves. What are we seeking when we're spending time with Jesus? Are we just seeking him and spending time with him just for our own personal gain? Or are we doing that just to truly get to know him? I definitely agree that healings that you can get from spending time with Jesus and going up in a prayer line are great, but the most important thing is getting to know him and fellowshipping with him daily by praying the Spirit and worshiping, reading his word. That comes above everything else. I agree that um, healing services are a good thing to have, um, but the main thing we have to keep our focus on is getting to know Jesus on a personal level. And some people just seek him when they need a healing, and then after that they go back to their old sinful life, and that's not something we're supposed to do. Um, just a little bit off topic, you know, when you get healed of something, you have to continue growing in your faith, or you can, as some people say, lose your healing. Um, like Jesus said to the one of the people he healed, go and sin no more. So, after you're healed, continue saying the faith. Don't just like quit right there. Be like, oh, I got what I wanted, so I can continue on my life carefree and not worry about any of this. But you have to continue on in the Word and praying in the Spirit daily and all that stuff. So something I just want to encourage you to do. And ask yourself regularly, am I just seeking Jesus to be blessed myself? Or am I seeking Him to truly get to know Him and to share His message with others? And to bring glory to him, not glory to ourselves. That's just something just to think about. Um, where did I leave off? And they answered him and said, Rabbi, which is to say when translated, teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. So, I think I wrote a note down here for us. Oh no, I'm jumping ahead on my notes here. Um, going on to verse 40, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which has translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Um, and if you think of stone, I want you to think back to what was written in the book of Matthew, um, in chapter 16. If you would turn there, if you're following along in your Bible, or you can just listen to me read it. And we're talking about Peter here, um, Jesus referring to him as Cephas, which is translated stone. Go to Matthew chapter 16, and let's look at verse 16. Simon Peter answered him and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So, this kind of ties together here with him calling him Cephas here, with what's written in the book of John. Um, just something to point out, there's different things that relate together between the different Gospels. So, I always suggest to new believers to start out with reading the book of John and going on to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So you'll kind of see a lot of things kind of fit together. Um, and then there are some things that are only listed in certain Gospels. Um, I'll probably do a video on that at some point too, um, comparing all four of the Gospels, because um, there are a few differences between all of them and a lot of similarities too. Um, and let's go on to verses 43 and 44. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So here, 
um, we see that Jesus goes and finds Philip. And Philip, Andrew, and Peter are all from the same area. They were born in Bethsaida. So right there we kind of find something out about some of the other disciples. And as you read the different Gospels, you'll find out different facts about all the disciples, like where they were from and everything, and just different facts. So it's one thing to pay attention as you're reading it. Take notes on different things, and as you go through all of them, you can kind of put it all together. Um, that's why I always say make good notebooks. All right, and looking at verse 45 in John chapter 1, um, we're going to see some different things here. And I have a lot of scriptures to give you, especially from the Old Testament. So if you are following along, be sure to write these down and go back to them because there's some really good stuff here, um, especially in verses 45 all the way to the end that I want to give you here. So be sure to write these down. And I will have a outline link in the description below so you can just print that off um, and use that for your own personal study. Um, let's look at, let's see what I want to cover first. We'll actually just start with verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So first thing I want to say here is Philip goes to Nathaniel and he tells him about Jesus and then he talks about how Moses wrote about Jesus. If we go all the way back to the first book of the Bible, and one thing you have to remember that from Genesis all the way to Revelation, there's a picture, a very great picture painted of Jesus throughout all of it. You just have to look closely. There's several books written on this um, here. One is The Scarlet Thread. I definitely recommend reading that book. It's an awesome book. Um, definitely one that you will want to read multiple times. Um, but let's look at just Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So right here, um, some people refer to this as um, proto-evangelism, or proto-evangelism, excuse me, um, which is the first good news. Um, and this is pretty much for telling that Jesus will um, conquer the devil, um, he will defeat the devil. And the seed that is being talked about here, where it says her seed, it is talking about the seed of Jesus. And in chapter 3 of Genesis, this is actually talking about the fall of man and the serpent um, that deceived. Um, you can go back and read that, but this is talking about the serpent, which is the devil, of course. And where it talks about her seed in verse 15, you will notice that seed is capitalized, and that seed is capitalized because of Jesus. Um, and Jesus will defeat the devil. Um, go to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 with me. And here it tells us in Hebrews, Inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who has power over death. That is the devil. So the devil is the one who has power over death, but since we're with Jesus, he defeated him. He is defeated. The devil is defeated in the name of Jesus. Um, go to Revelation chapter 20 with me. There's a few scriptures I want to point out here. Um, let's start with verse 2 itself. Um, and this is actually talking about a little bit of stuff with the end times here, with 
what all takes place. He laid hold of the dragon and that serpent of old who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. So right here, Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years is what it's talking about. And then if you go to verse 7, it tells us what happens after the seven years. I'm not going to read what's in between there. Definitely suggest you read the book of Revelation, too. A lot of good information there. Um, now when the thousand years have expired, or that the thousand years were up, Satan was released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand in the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth, and surrounded the camp of the saints and beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast, this is talking about the Antichrist, the beast, and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And one thing I want to point out here, um, this is talking about what takes place with Satan um, during the millennial um, or thousand year period. One thing I want to point out here where it talks about the beast, that is the Antichrist and the false prophet. They will have a lot to do with the tribulation period when that does occur. Um, and one thing I want to point out to you, um, and there's many people out there who follow um, different news stories to kind of get a glimpse of things with end time prophecy. And there is a lot of things going on, don't get me wrong. But as believers, we cannot become so consumed with the stuff with the end times. Don't get too distracted about stuff that's taking place. Just keep our focus on Jesus. Um, just as a side note, one thing I want to point out about the book of Revelation, because a lot of people, there's, there's different ministers that that's all they talk about is the book of Revelation. And they're more concerned about the, what's going on in the news and actually talking about Jesus and salvation and everything else that is important. Chapter 1, verse 1 in the book of Revelation says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place, and he sent and justified it by his angel to the servant John. Okay, and then if you go all the way to the last chapter of Revelation, which is chapter 22, and verse 21, that's the very last verse of the book, it says, The grace of the Lord... Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So, Revelation starts by talking about Jesus, and it ends by starting to talk about Jesus. So, our focus has to be about Jesus when we're reading Revelation. Not to get too caught up with all the prophetic stuff in here, but it's written to keep us aware of all this stuff, too. So, just something I want to encourage you to do when you're reading Revelation. I know some people get excited about s certain things in it, but... Don't lose focus on Jesus because that's the whole point. It's the revelation of Jesus here. Um, because simply, Jesus is mentioned in the beginning and the end. Um, but anyway, let's continue on with what I have for the book of John. Um, turn with me to Romans chapter 16. And verse 20, which tells us, And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly, and the grace of our Lord Jesus will be with you. Amen. <clears throat> um, right here, God gives us the power through the Holy Spirit to deal with the works of the devil. And you know, it's so important why believers need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because that's one of the things the devil cannot stand is when believers get baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. Um, that's why there are certain doctrines out there that say that tongues are not for today. That's just what the devil wants people to think. And 
you know, God gives us the power through the Holy Spirit to deal with the works of the devil, and that's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our churches today more than ever before. So, just something else to talk about here with that. Um, and then, Philip also reminds Nathaniel as he's talking to him in the Gospel of John in verse 45 where he says that the prophets wrote about Jesus. So when Philip was telling Nathaniel that the prophets also wrote about Jesus, there's a few scriptures from um, the Old Testament I want to give you also, so be sure to write these ones down also and go back and do some studying on them. I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, the first one is in Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 2, which tells us, In that day the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing, for those of Israel who escaped. Um, then let's look also at Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. I want to read it to you from the Amplified Bible. I usually read from New King James, but sometimes I like to look at the Amplified. I'm looking at chapter 7 verse 14 in Isaiah. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Listen carefully. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. Alright, so it's talking about this is going to be a virgin birth here. Mary is a virgin when she gives birth to Jesus. Um, and she will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. So Emmanuel means God with us. Um, another one I want to give you is Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Which tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So Jesus is wonderful, he's our counselor, he is Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and he is Prince of Peace. You know, some people in this world that don't have Jesus, they're acknowledging and worshipping the prince of evilness, the prince of darkness, the devil. But, you know, I'd rather be all for Jesus, the prince of peace, because that is who we have our peace through, is Jesus. And we can't let the devil steal that peace we have in Jesus. And another scripture I want to give you from the Old Testament is Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. Which tells us, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. I'm not sure what that word is. And when he, excuse me, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So there's gonna be, there's nothing like extremely special of Jesus's appearance right here. He's he pretty much just likes a, looks like another person, an ordinary person, when he was doing his earthly ministry. And then it's just a reminder that God looks at the heart of a person, not the outward appearance of a person. Um, and that's said in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Bear with me a second. Chapter 16, verse 7, which tells us, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord does not see as man sees. But for a man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. We always have to remember, God looks at the heart of a person, and he searches the heart. Um, and turn with me here also to Malachi also. We're going to take a look at that one also. Malachi chapter 5. Excuse me, Micaiah 
chapter 5, sorry about that. <laughs> chapter 5, verse 2 again, it's in Micaiah. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old from everlasting. That's not our prophetic um, scripture on Jesus. Then turn me with um, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. That's actually the last one I'm going to give you here. There's many more I could give you, but I'm just giving you several. Um, again, this is Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, and he is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the full fowl of a donkey. So right here, this is telling us the stuff of Jesus. Um, and where it talks about the donkey, we will see as we get later into the book of John. Um, but we'll talk about that when we get there in a series. So, going back to the book of John after looking at those several scriptures, and Philip was telling Nathaniel that Jesus was written about by Moses and also written about by the prophets in the Old Testament. And Nathaniel's response was in verse 46, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Then Philip says to them, come and see for yourself. So Jesus then sees Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, whom is no deceit. One thing I want to point out in verse 46 where Nathanael said to Philip, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Right there, Nathanael was already starting to look at Jesus through human standards. And we have to realize when we look at Jesus and the things of Jesus and of God, we can't look at them with human standards because this world does not understand the things of God. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to teach us the things of God as we read the Bible. Um, and just something to think about that even the Pharisees will look at Jesus with human standards. As we go through the Gospel of John, we will see that very evident. They're looking at Jesus with human standards and through their natural eyes. But when you're looking into the things of God, you have to have your spiritual eyes wide open. And sadly, many believers do not have that. Um, they're looking at the Bible with their natural eyes, and they're not getting a full grasp of everything in the Scripture, and they take Scripture out of context, and it leads to bad doctrine. Um, just another thing I want to mention here on the subject of human standards um, you know, when you're asking God for a miracle, and we'll see this as we get into chapter 2 here, um, talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, when God does miracles and healings, you know, they may not be like we expect them to be of our human standards, and they may not match up very well with modern medicine, you know. We can't have our trust in the medical doctors more than our trust in Jesus. Otherwise, you're pretty much surrendering yourself to the medical system. I'm not condoning doctors or saying you shouldn't go to a doctor or take medicine. But what I'm saying is that you should have more trust in Jesus and his healing power than your trust in medications and what your doctor says. You should trust Jesus way more than any of that. And it's just something I want to encourage you to do. And not to expect certain healings to happen a certain way. Just expect God to make the healing happen however he wants to. Um, because he is the God of the impossible. We might be surprised how he um, works something out for us. Um, it may not be as we expect of our human standards. But he's the God of the supernatural. And he might do a healing in a completely different way than we expect to. So just something I want to remind you of. And then going on in verse 48, Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So Jesus is pretty much prophesying over Nathanael here. He saw him beforehand under a fig tree. And Nathanael answered and said to him, 
Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered him and said to him, Because I say to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Thank you, Lord, for that. And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God descending upon the Son of Man. So again, right here, Jesus is saying that we shouldn't seek him only for the signs. We should seek him just to get to know him more and more every day, not always seeking him for signs. Some people just seek Jesus for signs. Some people go to a church service for just the healing, and that's all they want. They don't want nothing more. Or they see a prophetic conference, and they're like, oh, I want to be prophesied over, but yet they don't want nothing to do with salvation. It's very sad to see that common today in certain groups that the first focus always needs to be on salvation and getting to know Jesus, not just looking to him for the signs and everything. So just something I want to remind you about. You're going to, we're going to see that talked about a lot here in the Gospel of John. Um, and that is all I have for you with this teaching. Um, and for prayer requests, I only have a few prayer requests for cancer. So I'm just going to pray for everybody with cancer. And if God leads me to pray for anything else, I will do that also. Um, and again, if you have prayer requests, please comment them down in the section below in the comment section or fill out that prayer request with the link I put um, in the description. So, dear Heavenly Father, we come humbly to you, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord, and for this message here, Lord. And, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you heal people that are dealing with cancer in the name of Jesus. I rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus and the complications from these chemotherapy drugs and radiation and any other type of medication. The people that are dealing with cancer that have contacted me for prayer and the people that are dealing with cancer that are watching or their loved ones that have cancer, I call them healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the healing power in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, they are healed of cancer in the name of Jesus. I call them free of cancer in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the works of cancer in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Lord, for the miracles and the healings of cancer that are going to take place, and it will be glory to you, Lord. And we thank you and praise you for it. I call them healed in the name of Jesus. They are no longer captive to cancer in the name of Jesus. And anyone that is watching this that is dealing with some form of sickness or pain in their body, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and I call them healed. And, Lord, I also pray for everyone this time of year to... Um, have a supernatural realm of protection against the flu and viruses going around in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, I also pray for America, Lord, that you will work on the hearts of every political leader in this country, Lord, and that righteousness may prevail through this land, Lord. And Lord, raise up people in the churches, Lord, so that revival can take place because revival is not going to happen through political leaders. It has to start in the church, Lord. Set the church on more of a fire for you than ever before, Lord. Raise up new people in churches, Lord. And I pray that everyone that's watching this, Lord, that you give them a fresh and filling of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for all this. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So again, I want to thank you for watching. God bless you, and I hope you have a great week. Um, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. And... Um, be sure to check out um, my next teaching on the Gospel of John, and I will also put the playlist that has all the Gospel of John teachings linked in the description below. So once again, thank you for watching, and God bless you, and have a great week. Thank you.